Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Today we continue our lecture, page 16, chapter number 4, Stand Alone Photovoltaic Power System. So we continue with number 6, which is system sizing. So the design step of PV battery are as follow. So this is the design step. Step number 1. Determine the worth man data. First, we need to consider the worst man condition where the ratio of solar irradiation. So, this is the symbol H unit kilowatt hour per square meter and load L KBA is the lowest. So, from this man, we can determine the peak sun hour and the load profile that will be used throughout in our design. So, if the worst month data is not available, then we need to make a reasonable assumption. Let's see one example how to determine this solar irradiation uh, ratio, ratio of solar irradiation to load, RHDL. So, given here is the monthly solar irradiation and load consumption are shown below. So, this solar irradiation data, you can get from the nearest meteorological department in your area. So, example here, we have data for solar irradiation monthly from January to December. So, this is what we record the monthly load. For dry season, this is for Malaysia. Dry season from March to September. So, monthly load, we represent in VAH. Volt ampere hour. So, this VAH is the apparent power consumed over time. So, dry season, we have 1440 volt ampere hours. And wet season from October to February, which is 1000 volt ampere hour. So, why this wet season give more load compared to dry season? This is because commonly economic activities in rural area, because SFAV usually installed in rural area, include farming, agricultural, hunting, fishing, etc. So, during wet season or raining season, some of these activity cannot be done. So, they will stay at home. So, when they stay at home, they will open their TV, radio, etc. So, that's why the monthly load for wet season is higher than dry season. So, how to determine this worst month data? So, by using equation of ratio of solar irradiation to load. So, this is the load given from dry and wet season that we know the data. So, you calculate HRTL. So, the worst HRTL is on December, which is 59. So, now we know the worst month is December. So, from this value, we can determine the peak sun hour and the load. Profile so throughout in our design. Okay, that one is for step number one. Okay, step number two. We need to know whether the DC or AC load that have been used by the resident. So DC and AC load profiles. So example here, this is a load profile. So this is what we need. We need to take note. So, the appliances, for example, TV, radio, DC load, the power or unit in what, number of unit, which is maybe they have a two lighting or one TV, you need to take note with the number. DC to DC converter efficiency that used to convert from uh, the DC to DC. The duration of operation in day, in one day. Total power, you need to calculate PDC, power, multiply with number of unit, divide with DC-DC converter efficiency. 
and to calculate the total energy using this equation but you multiply with hour. Okay, so you need to calculate for every type of load. Let's say they have lighting, TV, radio, etc. Okay. So if they have AC load also, you need to calculate same thing. Power. You need to know the power, the number of unit, duration of operation per day. But this they have this inverter efficiency of the equipment. Power factor in per unit, search factor, total power. So total power, same with the DC load profile, the equation. But you need to multiply with the power factor of the load. Total search power. So by using this equation, but you need to multiply with the search factor to get the search power. And total energy, so from this equation, you multiply with hours. Okay. So please take note, in some cases where special DC-DC converter are used, then the dc converter FGC must be considered in the design. So if no special converter, you can assume efficiency equals to 1. Noted that if uh, inverted efficiency are as follow this symbol eh? efficiency of the inverter. So make sure for this equation you use efficiency of the DC DC converter for DC load. For AC load you use the efficiency of the inverter. So if the load is the combination of DC and AC load. To, to calculate the total daily energy consumption from the battery is determined by so the energy required from this equation this is for AC load and this is for DC load you need to total up all so here is for the DC load plus with AC load so if you only have DC load so this is the equation for DC load. If you have only AC load, so this is the equation for energy required for AC load. So next one, you calculate the maximum power demand from the load. So P max, PDC multiply with number of unit divide with DC to DC converter efficiency this is for DC load plus this is for AC load. But please remember for DC load, we have power factor. You need to multiply for factor with the efficiency of the inverter. Then calculate the total maximum search factor, search power demand, sorry. Calculate the total maximum search power demand by using this equation PS max so S represent the search so this is for the DC load and here is for the AC load so you need to total up all if you have the combination of DC and AC load again don't forget to multiply with search factor for calculation or maximum search factor for AC load So for DC load, they don't have this search factor. You can see that this equation is similar to this equation because search factor is 1. This is a DC load. Okay, step number 3. Okay, before we go to step number 3, please remember that for step number 2, you need to calculate 3 things which is energy required P max and PS max. Okay, this one is for step number 2 which is for DC and AC load profile. Now we proceed to step number 3. Step number 3, determine the system voltage. 
So the following table give the guideline. This is the guideline setting for the voltage level. Okay, let's say when you calculate the energy required from the load, you get less than 1 kilowatt hour. So we recommend that you use the system voltage which is 12 volt. If you get between 1 to 4 kilowatt hour, you can use system voltage 24 volt. So between energy required 4 to 8, you use 48 volt. And energy required between 8 kilowatt hour to more than 8 kilowatt hour, you can use 96 volt. So this system voltage is important to sizing the battery. So step number four, you determine the battery size. So sizing of the battery, as the temperature decrease, the capacity cell decrease and vice versa. So thus, at high temperature, less capacity of battery is required compared to at low temperature. So battery manufacturer could sell capacity at a given temperature and appropriate correction factor should be used for other temperature. So that one, you can refer to this data sheet. We can see here when the temperature is low, they have this cell size correction factor higher compared with the at high temperature, the cell correction factor is low. Okay. So at low temperature, then required a larger size of the battery. So that's why you have this cell correction factor which is larger than this cell correction factor at the high frequency, uh, high, de high temperature. Okay, next one. To determine the size of battery required, the following formula shall be used. So this is the size of the battery required. So this is energy required from the load. And the autonomy day. Autonomy days is the number of days without sunlight that the battery still enable to supply power. So you, if you design for the PV, hybrid, uh, PV battery, typically this autonomy day is 5 day. And for hybrid system, usually the autonomy day is 2 days. Okay, bed temperature. So this is the battery temperature factor. So temperature correction factor for battery usually given by battery manufacturer. Generally, lowering operating battery temperature result in decreased battery capacity. Thus, you need to select higher battery capacity. So, this is what I said before. So, if the operating degree is low, so you need a higher battery capacity. Multiply with design margin. So typically for Malaysia, the design margin is between 1 to 1.2. So we a little bit oversize the system suitable for Malaysia climates. Divide with V system. So the V system you already choose in step number 3 which is from the energy required by the load multiply with DOD max. So this is maximum depth of discharge of the battery which is between 0 0.2 to 0 0.8. Let's see example number 2. Given the following information, total daily load energy is 10 kVAH, this is the apparent power 
consume over time. The autonomy days is 3 days. So the maximum depth of discharge 0 0.8. So system voltage, we choose 24 volt. You can choose this system or you can estimate from this recommendation which is 12 volt uh, 24 volt sorry 24 volt expected battery electrolytic temperature so 30 degrees Celsius so that one you can get from the data sheet of the battery so this is in the Fahrenheit and this is in degrees Celsius so in this question it's uh, 30 degrees Celsius So the design margin, we use the highest one, which is 1.2. So determine the battery capacity required. So from here, you uh, you already know the energy required, the autonomy, the OD max, V system, K bat, which is 0 0.956. This is from the data sheet of the battery. And the design margin, which is 1.2. So by using this equation, C bed required. So this is from the load and the system voltage from the battery. So you will get in 1792.5 ampere hour. So knowing the battery capacity only is not enough for us to choose the battery from the manufacturer data sheet. So we need to know also the discharge rate of the battery. So how to calculate the discharge rate? We're using this formula. So T bed discharge. So C bed required in AH divide with B mag over B system. So this is the current. Okay? Current from the system. So choose the next fastest discharge rate from the battery data sheet. So please remember the next fastest discharge rate. Okay, let's see this example. Example number three. So now you already know the total capacity, uh, total battery selected required is 1000 AH. So the maximum demand is 1,100 watt system voltage 24 volt. So now determine the discharge rate of the battery. So the discharge rate of the battery by using this equation, AH over A. So you get 21.81 hour so this is the charge rate 21.8 hour so from this value so you choose c20 c20 means the discharge rate is 20 hour okay it will discharge in 20 hours so the next faster discharge rate let's say you have Three choice you have C fifteen, C five, and C twenty. So you choose the next faster compared to this twenty one hour, which is C twenty. So that's what it mean by the next faster discharge rate. Other than that, other than uh, size of the battery required, C bed required, discharge rate, it's not enough eh, for you to choose the battery. You also need to check the battery. If uh, to check the battery whether the battery can support the search current. So the total search current is I search. So this is the maximum. Search power PS max divide with V system. So you need to check 
the rating for the battery. Make sure the rating for the battery should be larger than I search. What happen if the rating battery is less than I search? What you need to do is you need to turn on the load one by one. So let's see this um, example, example number four, how to calculate this I search. So given the following information, so the total search power from the battery is 1200 VA. So this one you calculate from step number two, okay? search power. And then this is for step number three, which is you choose the system voltage. Example here, 24 volt. So determine the total search current from the battery. So here your search current by using this equation, you get 50 ampere. So in this case, the battery rating at C1 should be higher than 50 ampere hour. So you need to choose the battery which is higher than 50 ampere hour. So in case if your capacity, uh, the battery rating is less than I search, what we need to do is you need to switch each load at different time so that the search current could be reduce. As a guideline, switch on the highest search load first. For example, moto with the highest search factor. Then let the current stabilize for a few minutes and then switch on the next highest search load and wait for a few minutes. Repeat the process until all the required load are switched on. So this is example how you switch on the load one by one. So given the following load information, so you have three water pump with each using two horsepower induction motor. So assume search factor of five during starting of each induction motor. Power factor of 0 0.85 for each induction motor. And then you have another load which is 2 unit of 30 watt incandescence bulb. And, one, uh, and the inverter efficiency is 85%. So usually this inverter efficiency, so for high quality sine wave, the inverter are rated between 90 to 99% efficiency. But for the lower modified sine wave inverter, usually less than 90% efficiency. However, the efficiency of the inverter is depends on the inverter load. So if all the loads are need to be turned on, arrange the possible switching sequence of the load so that the AC search power can be reduced. What is the lowest possible AC search power? So remember that you need to turn on the highest search load first, which is water pump. Okay. So you have three water pump here. So I assign here water pump number one. So first you turn on the water pump number one. So this is the value of horsepower. So you convert into kilowatt, which is you multiply with 746. Okay. To multiply with 746, you get in kilowatt. And then power factor of the motor and the search factor. This is the efficiency of the inverter. This is uh, the calculation for the 
PAC search. So, how you get this equation? You are using equation in step number 2. Okay, this one. Okay. So, you calculate your PS mat using AC equation, AC load equation. So, you get this value. PAC search. PAC continuous also, you calculate your P max similar with uh, step number 2, which is your P max. Okay, you're using this equation. Okay, P max for the AC load. Okay, so, you get this. So you get this value. So you need to wait for a few minutes after you turn on pump number one, and then you turn on pump number two. So I already draw how it looks like the search and the continuous power. Oops, not this one. Okay, so this is when you turn on your pump number one. So this is your P search. Okay, you calculate your P SMA, eh? P search for pump number one. And then you wait few minutes, so it will be stabilized, eh? continuous power or P steady. So this is your P max for load number one. So after the current, uh, the power is continuous, steady. Next, you turn on the pump number two. So when you turn on pump number two, so this is the power which is P steady load one. Okay, from the load one, you plus with the search power from the load number two. So P steady load one plus P search load number 2. So in this case, because we using the same pump for pump number 1 and pump number 2 and pump number 3. So your P steady load 1 here and the P search for load 1 will equal to P search load number 2. Okay. So, if you refer to these values, so this PAC search, okay, for load pump number 2 is P steady load 1, which is 2.07 plus P search load 2. So, this P search load 2 is equals to P search load 1, which is we using the same type of Pump. So, 10.33 plus 2.07. So, you get similar to this value. Okay. So, this is the PAC search for pump number 2. So, you wait a few minutes. So, we have this P steady load 1 plus P steady load 2 which is load 1 is 2.07 kilowatt using the same type of pump of course we can get same PAC continuous or P max at 2.07 so 2.07 plus 2.07 so you get almost 4.14 or 4.13 okay so this is the value For P steady load 1 plus P steady load 2. And then you turn on pump number 3. So you have another search. So this search is combination of P steady load 1 plus P steady load 2. Okay. P steady load 1, P steady load 2 plus with P search load Three. Okay. 
So here we get 12.40 plus 4.13. So you get 16.53. Wait a few minutes and the power will become steady again. So this steady is P steady load 1 plus P steady load 2 plus P steady load 3 which is 2.07 plus 2.07 plus 2.07 so you get almost 6.20 okay. so when you already turn on your pump for all these three okay so this is only for three load so for two bulb when you turn on, this is the pay AC search 16.53 plus 6.20, same concept. But the P continuous, which is P max for the two box only, 0 0.07. Okay, so that's why you get 6.20 plus 0 0.07 of the P max of from the two bulbs so when the load are turned on one by one so the lowest possible AC search power is 10.33 kilowatt and the highest possible AC search power is 22.72 kilowatt Okay, so next one, after you choose the battery, you need to calculate or find the battery configuration. So battery configuration, number of parallel string. So this is number of parallel string of the battery and P bed. You need to run out. C bed required. This is, this is from the calculation. And C bed available is uh, the value of the battery that you choose from the data sheet of the battery. So this one you please refer to the video on the system sizing of SAPV, there is an example how to calculate NP bed and S bed and how to choose the battery. So number of battery is series per string and S bed. So V system that you choose is step number three and the the voltage of the battery per unit, which is you choose from the data sheet of the battery. So in practice. NP should not be more than 3 string. So make sure the parallel strings not more than 3 in, in, in practical, in practice because this could prevent from unbalancing charging of the battery and S which is depend on V system. So daily DOD, day of discharge of the battery, DOD daily so C bed consume daily, which is energy required from the load, and C bed actual or V system multiply with V bed actual. So you can use either this equation or this equation to get your depth of discharge of your battery in a day. So from this calculation, you will know the how much the day of discharge of the battery? So it is very important to design SAPV system with daily DOD, which is maximum up to approximately 20%. So it will prolong the lifetime of the battery. So how that happen? You can refer to this picture, which is a typical relationship between daily DOD and the lifetime of the battery. Let's say your, your day of discharge 
daily is 100% mean totally drain okay. when the depth of discharge is 100% totally drain every day so your life cycle of the battery only about 20 uh, 230 cycle but if your depth of discharge or the battery is 30%, it will increase the number of cycle. So it will prolong the lifetime of the battery. So we already finished how to design from the load. This is from the load. Okay. So this is from the load profile, this is the load, either DC or AC load or combination of DC and AC load. And then the system voltage and then sizing of the battery, we have three. You need to calculate, see bed required. So the size of the battery required. And then calculate the discharge rate of the battery. And then calculate the current search from the battery. So make sure you choose the battery which is have the higher rating. Which have the high rating compared to high search. So if you have C, capacity of battery less than ICES, you need to turn on Y by 1 of your load. And then this is the battery configuration and the depth of discharge. So I think I will stop here before we continue to step number 5. Okay, thank you.